family, friends, community. Latino culture reflects a positive outlook on life. But just like a physical illness, mental illness can cast a cloud over the future. It can affect you as an individual and your family. You know, you can walk around and pretend like, like it doesn't exist, but it, it does. To help you understand mental illness, real patients have generously shared their experiences for this program. You'll also hear from experts in the field of mental health and from a public health pioneer, Dr. Antonia Novello, America's first Hispanic Surgeon General. Come out, find help. It is there. Dr. Antonia Novello has walked the corridors of power in the United States for many years as Surgeon General and as Commissioner of Health for the state of New York. Thou shalt not be a victim. Dr. Novello's passion for improving the lives of all families includes a focus on mental health. And when you're a Hispanic and you talk about mental illness, sometimes we tend to keep things under the table secret, and that's wrong because today there is help for everyone and you are not the only one who suffers from this. In the United States, doctors use medical terms to describe different types of mental disorders. Here are some of the most common. Anxiety is a normal reaction to fear or stress, but when it gets out of control and interferes with a person's life, it is called an anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorder can take many forms with many different symptoms. The signs that uh, people might notice uh, uh, through identifying anxiety in a loved one include uh, agitation, restlessness, feeling of fear or, or doom, aches and pains, for example, muscle tension, uh, headaches, uh, stomach aches. You know, sometimes I can even develop into uh, what are called panic attacks. Symptoms of panic attacks or panic disorder can include a pounding heart, sweating, weakness, dizziness, or smothering sensations. People having a panic attack often fear they are about to be harmed, that they are not in control and have a general sense of unreality. And you just feel like the world is closing in on you. Jose C. experienced many of those feelings before he was diagnosed with panic disorder a type of anxiety disorder. My palms would sweat a lot. I'm really out of control a lot. And um, I, would, I wouldn't um, be able to communicate more effectively the way I wanted to with my wife. As often happens with mental illness, it was the spouse who called attention to the symptoms. Jose's wife, Marianne, helped him realize that he needed to seek medical care. I, I had to see for myself that a lot of the signs that my wife was sharing with me were there and really just couldn't come to terms that you know, this, is, this is something that I have to deal with. The causes of anxiety can be wide ranging. So can the symptoms. Jose experiences panic disorder. That is just one of many forms anxiety disorder can take. Another anxiety disorder is called post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. This can occur when a person is terrified by a situation involving physical harm or the threat of harm, such as combat, immigration issues, natural disasters, and violence at home or in the community. PTSD can be associated with nightmares, recurring memories, and feelings of terror. Again, there are many kinds of anxiety disorder, but one common theme is the relief of recognizing you have a problem and dealing with it. The story that Jose tells us illustrates a challenge that many Latinos face in seeking treatment in that uh, we Latinos many times may have multiple roles and responsibilities. We have multiple burdens. 
we put treatment off and can sometimes put it off for years with uh, problematic consequences. When I finally got my diagnosis, it sort of put everything in perspective. One reason Jose's wife, Mary Ann, knew he needed help was that she herself had struggled with a mental disorder, depression. My depression, it started when I was in my teens, about 15. I was very introverted, um, just thinking too much, too, just too much to myself. Neither Mary Ann nor her parents realized what was wrong. It just kind of went untreated for many, many years. So use drugs, alcohol, a lot of different things to medicate my emotions and my feelings. I didn't learn until later on uh, in my later 20s that I had a mental illness. Depression is a medical condition um, in which people feel extremely depressed and sad for a sustained period of time. They could have uh, a sense of hopelessness and extreme guilt. Um, even though there's no reason uh, for feeling this way. People who are depressed might have an inability to feel interest or pleasure. Normal activities such as eating, socializing, recreation, or sex lose their appeal. People with depression often lack motivation and feel tired. Even small tasks may seem exhausting, including seeking help. Also, in depression, you have problems with sleep, with appetite, um, which can either be significantly decreased or increased. Other symptoms include feelings of worthlessness, problems with concentration and making decisions, and thoughts of death or suicide. If you or a loved one are having thoughts of hurting yourself, immediate medical attention is needed. There was a point where the depression got so bad that I wanted to commit suicide. And my mom, she actually thought that I was just trying to get attention. Marianne did need attention, medical attention. She finally got it when she was a mother herself. Thinking more about my children made me get more help for myself. Latinos sometimes express depression differently from others. If they're depressed, for example, they may be more likely to complain of body aches, nerves, or headaches. What happens with the Latinos sometimes, because we tend to believe that it's a nervousness, tiredness. We try to give them a physical ailment so it's better tolerated by society and then we always assume that it will go away. Like anxiety, depression can take different forms. Major depressive disorder is a potentially life-threatening disease that leaves people hopeless and emotionally exhausted. Depression can develop seemingly without a cause or it may be triggered by an event. For Jose L., it was the death of his mother. My mother was an angel to me, and when she passed away, it was like I had lost my best friend. And um, her, her death devastated me to a point where um, I could not get out of bed. I ended up being diagnosed with major depressive disorder. There are other forms of depression. For example, a milder form of depression is called dysthymic disorder, or dysthymia. People with dysthymia may feel gloomy, irritable, or humorless much of the time over a period of years. Postpartum depression is when a new mother has symptoms of major depression. Bipolar disorder is a serious mood disorder, which puts a person on a seesaw between the lows of depression and agitated, sometimes irritable highs called mania. Judgment can be seriously impaired, possibly leading to dangerous behaviors. Clouded judgment may also cause a person to deny the illness and the need for help. The individual has increased energy, has racing thoughts, uh, can be very grandiose, and people can become impulsive and self-destructive. Only some of us ever experience the mania of bipolar disorder, but the symptoms of depression are more familiar. Many of us may have felt some of those symptoms during our lives. When we feel that way more constantly, we should seek help. Schizophrenia is a severe brain disorder that may cause people to behave in bizarre ways. 
They also have trouble with telling reality from non-reality. So for example, they may uh, believe that uh, they're hearing voices that otherwise other people don't hear or see things that other people don't see or misinterpret things in the environment to think that people are trying to do harm to them or control them in some fashion. Like all mental illnesses, schizophrenia takes a toll on the family as well as the patient. It's an illness that can make relationships difficult to maintain. Irene and her daughter look at photographs from the past with sadness because when Irene's son, Heriberto, grew past childhood, he started changing. I first noticed when he was 16, he cried a lot by the night. And, and when I go to his room and I ask him and he never tell me nothing. So I told him he was depressed or sad. The situation got worse. Heriberto was hearing voices, hallucinating, and his behavior was changing. When my son started to scream in the, in the apartment, and the neighbors called the police, and the police want to take him. So they called the ambulance, and they bring to the hospital. In the hospital, they said he has schizophrenia. Schizophrenia can result in flawed judgment interfering with the person's ability to recognize his or her condition. At such points in the illness, family support to seek and continue treatment is crucial. In getting help for her son, Irene showed courage and an ability to see beyond cultural stigma. Some Latinos view the symptoms of schizophrenia as expressions of religious or supernatural experiences, but it is a real illness that needs real medical care. And if people understand that these are real medical conditions, I think people will be more likely to seek help. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is one of the most common mental disorders in children and adults. You're not able to complete tasks, you get distracted, uh, and also sometimes people with ADHD can be very impulsive as well. They can uh, sometimes do things before they think. Mary Ann has a toddler and two teenagers. Her firstborn showed signs of ADHD when he was five. And the teachers just had a really hard time trying to control him and um, just have him sit down and be still. After he was diagnosed with ADHD, he started medication. Marianne knows it's important to get help because ADHD can affect a child's success in school. Other types of mental illness include eating disorders and substance related disorders such as heavy use of alcohol or illegal drugs. If you suspect someone you're close to has a problem, offer to help them find professional health care. And if at all possible, go with them. That's the best support sometimes, being at their side helping them overcome the natural fear of taking that step to uh, seeking treatment. In Latino communities, there can be other ways to describe mental illness. The medical profession calls these terms culture-bound syndromes. Some of those syndromes include what is called susto, which means fright, or ataque de nervios, in which patients scream, yell, and it's kind of similar to a panic attack. You might also hear people describe symptoms as a case of mal de ojo. These syndromes are important to recognize because they are very prevalent in some groups within the Hispanic culture. You will use whatever means you have been brought up with to get the expression of your fear. And in the Latinos, it could be un susto, it could be a fainting, it could be a screaming match, or it could be a nerve attack, as they call it. For us, that is a manifestation of, I need help. But Latino culture can create barriers to getting that help. Sometimes families hold back because of a stigma surrounding mental illness. It is seen sometimes as a failure of the person, as a character flaw, uh, as sometimes even a black mark on the family. Earlier, we introduced you to Jose L. His major depression was diagnosed after his mother died, but it wasn't the first time he had tried to seek treatment. 
When I graduated from high school, I was barely 18. I was experiencing a lot of depression, sadness. I felt alone and misunderstood. And uh, I went to see a psychologist because what I was feeling was very, very strange. And um, I didn't know what it was, but I just couldn't deal with it anymore. But that first attempt at getting help was interrupted. Jose was having difficulty getting along with his father. When the psychologist suggested they both come in for help, his father refused. When I got home, I relayed the information to my father and he basically ridiculed me and said that uh, it was not necessary for him to go as he did not have a problem. So it took courage for Jose to get the treatment he needed as a teen and later when depression hit him again in his 20s, but he's glad he did. Don't be afraid to get help. There's help and you can survive. You can live with this illness. Latinos are very practical. Uh, we, we are present and problem oriented. Uh, and actually that's the way that mental health treatment is going these days. Jose found it helpful to talk through his feelings with a mental health professional. It's a process called talk therapy or psychotherapy. Because those feelings and negative emotions need to come out. And these are professionals that with one question or of which is perhaps composed of two or three words, can touch a spot that's been hurting for years. And when that pain comes out, they're there as professionals to help you cope and see things differently. Talk therapy can also help a patient move beyond old hurts and focus on the future. Talk therapy these days is about finding practical solutions and a person's changing ways of thinking or behaving that are counterproductive, that actually contribute to the problem rather than helping the problem. Marianne relies on talk therapy to help her recognize triggers in everyday life that affect her state of mind. Therapy is what really, really helps you to focus on when those triggers happen, um, how to deal with them, and how, how to be aware when they do come so that you don't fall into a deep depression or so you know when to get help. Jose also talks about mental health issues with other patients. I go to a support group once a week on Fridays where it's composed of people with different types of mental illness including major depressive disorder. And listening to their stories makes me feel that I'm not alone which is a huge help. Just as some people take daily medications for diabetes or high blood pressure, many people take medication every day for a mental illness. If your doctor prescribes medication, it's very important to take it as directed and not to stop on your own. People who seek professional help and are given medications frequently stop taking the medication on their own as soon as they're feeling better. If a patient stops their medication prematurely, they can relapse. The other reason though people stop taking their medicine is because they have side effects or adverse effects. Uh, and then it's important for the family to support the person communicating back to their, their physician and letting them know what problems they're having quickly. There isn't just one medicine or two medicines. There are many, many that can try, and you sometimes have to try many to find the right one for you. Sometimes, not understanding the illness can cause a resistance to treatment. Irene's son even rejected the diagnosis. I said, Mommy, I don't have that. I never accept that. I don't be schizophrenic people, Mommy. Please, let me alone and don't take me, don't force me to, to take medication. And he had to, to be in the hospital three times to accept. But patients like the ones we've introduced you to do see the benefits they get from medication and from talk therapy. In the case of serious disorders, careful evaluation by a medical expert and treatment that combines medications, talk therapy, and other specialized services is essential. I believe it's like any other you know, sickness that you might have. You have, you have to see it through. You have to see the end result. 
what your efforts pay off. I'm so happy about now is that um, I see a therapist every week. I, I take medication every morning for my anxiety, and um, it, it's just been life-changing for me, personally. Latinos have a very strong, deep sense of, of, of spiritual belief, and I think also that's very important as a person deals with mental illness and they see hope and they see a, a future for themselves. Spiritual support can be a very important part of care for mental illness. So can traditional forms of healing, which healthcare professionals call alternative therapies. Alternative therapies, which can include sometimes uh, herbal remedies, sometimes can even be uh, alternative healing practices uh, provided by, by santeros or curanderos, uh, I think sometimes can be an important component of treatment for someone who has more traditional beliefs. Helpful, but sometimes medication is what you need to take care of the deceased entity to the end. Be sure to tell your doctor about any alternative therapies you're considering. And your healthcare professional needs to know about all the things you're taking, from herbal therapy to medications for conditions besides the mental illness. I think it's very important for people to understand that medications have interactions with other medications so that they should always tell their doctor what other medications they are taking. For some kinds of serious mental illness,